Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of The Genderly Show. And thank you for being here with me. My name is Eden Hare, and I'm going to be your hostess. If you've never thought about or considered what gender is beyond the cultural expectations, then this episode is going to be an eye-opener. I'm sure you've heard that there are many more than two genders we typically accept in society. Well, in this episode, we're going to talk about gender identity. So let's get started. So we established in a previous episode that sex is our physical characteristics from a reproduction perspective. Now, our sexual identity is who we are physically, and sex is, as we know, a way of reproducing for our species. Gender has had a similar meaning until well into the 20th century, when it really started to lean more towards being synonymous with gender identity. But what does that mean? I want to propose a different way of looking at things. So sex is the outward-facing definition of who we are as male and female, our physical characteristics. Gender could be said to also be an outward-facing view of who we are as man and woman. Gender identity, however, is an inward-facing view of who we are as man, woman. Basically, it's our self-conception of who we are. How we see and feel about ourselves relates to several facets of our identity. Our sexual identity, the physical being, the gender which society or others places us in, and who we feel we are. So we can say that just a little bit differently. Sex is what we are, male or female. Gender is who others think you are, man or woman or something else. Gender identity is who you think you are man, woman, or something else. And gender expression is how others see you based upon what you're wearing and how those clothes, um, makeup, etc., relate to their notion of your gender, which may not line up. So we're talking about gender identity. And as we know, sometimes our sexual identity and our gender the cultural view of gender, and our gender identity don't agree with each other. When they do, uh, people tend to not think about their gender. There is no difficulty in rationalizing who they are as male and female, man and woman. Those two concepts agree with each other, and we say that those people are cisgender or comfortable in same gender. However, when those concepts are not aligned. Um, they fall into an umbrella term, that being transgender, meaning to move when you shorten to trans. That's the root of the word trans. That means to move. And so we are moving our gender from where it would align to our birth sex, our physical sex, um, to where we feel it should be. Now, transgender, as I mentioned, is an umbrella term. It covers anything and everything which falls outside the cisgender space. But transgender is also a unique identity of its own, and that can lead to some confusion. So within that transgender umbrella, there falls to be the transgender gender identity, and then a collection of non-binary identities And non-binary meaning it's either both male-female, neither male-female, sometimes male, sometimes female, in the same day, in the same hour, not recognizing or not feeling like any gender whatsoever, a complete total void of gender, which would be gender void or agender, and... The collection of names go on, and there are many, many variations. Individuals can identify with a specific gender identity or may choose to identify with multiple gender identities, as with gender-fluid people. So depending upon the source um, that is the reference of your list of gender identities, there are dozens of them. I've seen as many as 68 different terms used to describe different gender identities. Now, admittedly, some of them 
overlap a lot or are different names for the same as or very similar to another gender identity. The point of gender identity is just because we see someone, we cannot automatically assume that we can identify their gender identity. And this is one of the challenges. So culturally, you know, generally when we see someone who meets the characteristics or what society has taught us to be the characteristics of a man or, or a male and a woman or a female, we make that assumption. So when we see a human being that has long hair, wears makeup, and wears a dress, culturally, most of us are brought up to make the assumption that that individual is a woman. Now, you notice that I did not point out the fact that this body had visible breasts because there are um, people who identify or express themselves with women's clothing, feminine clothing, who do not identify as a feminine gender. So we're going to say that whole discussion for gender expression. Um, so back to not being able to identify someone's gender. It's because you can't. Uh, again, gender identity is the inward view. It's who we, how we view ourselves. So when we see someone, we can see and make a guess based upon cultural cues, um, physical cues, as to whether or not this person is a man or a woman. But we can't be sure. And this is because a transgender woman may be masculine presenting, or a transgender man could be feminine presenting, or a cisgender man could be feminine presenting, and a cisgender woman could be masculine presenting. So... <laughs> How do you tell? So let's go back to my transgender woman, right? So like me, I'm a transgender woman. So that means that I identify, my gender identity is that of a woman. I use she and her pronouns and dress and otherwise present my expression is that F is feminine. A transgender woman who is masculine presenting, her gender identity is that as a woman. And she may use she and her pronouns, but she dresses more with a masculine expression. And this is what makes gender identity so difficult. But there are some other things we're thinking about in terms of gender identity, and that there is a very significant generational divide in how we think about gender. Um, the older we are, the younger we are, we think about gender differently. Um, as we get, the older we are, because we more likely grew up with the sense that gender and sex were more aligned than the perception is today. So those of us who have been raised with a more limited view of gender, we can and we should be taking this opportunity to look at the world uh, and look at gender with a new perspective, a different perspective. Read, understand, ask questions, just to understand the complexities of gender. Now, these things can be hard to ask, you know, whether you have a transgender, non-binary friend or child or sibling. I mean, those questions can be embarrassing to ask, but they're important so for me, when I started having the discussions with my sister and then later with my parents, I wanted to be as open as possible. And I will say that I'm a lot more open now than I was four months ago. And, and that's a good thing because you're encouraging not only yourself to explore and come to terms with, understand the intricacies of your own gender identity, you are also helping others around you 
look at things again with new eyes, a new perspective, a different perspective. And that means that you learn more about yourself and about the world in the process. And so do all the people around you, the ones that you're you want to, you want to have, and hopefully are supporting you in this journey. The reality is that gender diversity is not new. It has existed throughout history and all over the world. Gender, gender identity is one of the most fundamental aspects of a person's identity, and it can greatly influence your behaviors, and change over time. So when we are faced with situations where this very crucial part of our self is very narrowly defined, men can uh, must be male, can only dress this way, can only behave this way, can only hold these types of jobs. When they're rigidly enforced, individuals who exist outside those norms face incredible challenges. So when you have a man who decides that, hey, I'm going to wear a skirt because it's incredibly hot out and I'm sorry, my genitals are sweating and I don't like it. So I'm going to wear a skirt so I can have a little bit more airflow and feel more comfortable. Everyone else is going to ridicule, tease, potentially beat up this man because of the choice that he made to be more comfortable. But even those who vary only slightly from the norms can become targets for disapproval, discrimination, and again, even violence. It kind of sounds ridiculous when you think about it in today's day and age, as open as we are about a variety of different things, and a lot of different things, that we are so narrowly scoped, narrowly focused, narrowly accepting when it comes to something as basic as gender. All this negative stuff that I've been talking about, it doesn't have to be that way. So if we apply a little bit of thoughtful consideration to the uniqueness and validity of every person's experience of self, we can achieve a a much greater level of acceptance for everyone. Not only does this create greater inclusion for individuals who challenge the norms of gender, it creates a space for everyone, regardless of gender, race, skin color, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, background, culture, etc., to be able to explore and express who they really are. So thank you so much for being with me today. I hope, again, that this was informative, um, interesting. And until we meet again, have a blessed day.